twice a queen consort, twice a queen mother, and the daughter of a duke. She may not have ever been the queen in her own right, but she was an integral member of the medieval royal family. So let's go back to the beginning. Emma was born sometime between 1980 and the 1990s. She was the daughter of the Duke of Normandy and was used as a political pawn to create an alliance between Normandy and England. She married King Ethelred II in 1002 and became Queen of England at a crucial time in England's history. The Union hoped to prevent Viking raids from Normandy into England and act as a united force against the feared Viking conquest. Ethelred died in 1016, leaving behind two sons and heirs, Alfred and Edward. The Vikings had invaded England in 1015 and were slowly gaining more power and influence. And Emma went on to marry Canut, the Viking leader, in 1017. Canut chose to marry Emma to give him more legitimate claims to the throne. She had much respect in the country as Ethelred's widow and queen. Her position was an advantage for Canut and could be used to show continuity from the old Anglo-Saxon rule to the new Viking king. And she, yet again, was a political pawn, but this time around had much more power over the situation and more to gain for herself. Becoming queen once more would allow her to secure a succession for any of her future children, but that also meant that she would forgo her other children and their own claims. She may have also felt it her duty to become queen and ensure that the religion and the old regime was respected and implemented with this new Viking reign. Emma really acted as a tie to Christianity for the people of England. It is also thought that Emma's sons Alfred and Edward were spared, solely due to the fact that their mother married the Viking invader, who had killed all of the claimants to the throne. Instead, they were spared, but they were sent away in exile to Normandy. They were married for 18 years, and with Canut, Emma had another son, Harthur Canut. At this time, Emma once again became Queen of England, and eventually, thanks to Canut's power hunger, Queen of Denmark and Queen of Norway. Canut died in 1035, but that's not where her public life ended. Family matters consumed the rest of Emma's life and she spent the remainder of it fighting for the succession of her son, Hartha Canut. Now, reviewing the family tree, you may be asking, what about her other sons? Edward and Alfred were in their own right heirs to the English throne, and had potential to claim it. However, Emma chose to support her Danish Viking son over her elder Anglo-Saxon sons. When Canut died in 1035, Canut's other son, Harold Harefoot, not related to Emma, claimed the throne whilst Hartha Canuck was stuck over in Denmark. And only whilst Hartha Canuck could not return to England, Emma then called upon Alfred and Edward to come back to England and try and claim their right as the king. Alfred was captured and killed, and Emma was eventually exiled to Normandy herself in 1037. But her fight still didn't end there. Harold Harefoot ruled for five years, and he died in 1040. So Emma saw her chance. She reunited with Hartha Canut and finally he was able to claim the throne and crown himself king. And Emma still wasn't done. Hartha Canut was dying and historians think it's probably from tuberculosis but we aren't quite sure. But he still knew that he was sick. So in 1041 he invited his half-brother Edward back to England from exile. And until his death, Hartha Canut and Edward, Emma's two sons, shared the reign. Now, there wasn't too much written about this, but he was essentially made a glorified heir to the throne. And Emma, being the mother of these two kings, is said to have coordinated this arrangement. The Encomium Emma Regine was commissioned by Emma as a biography to praise her and to justify her actions. It was published during Hartha Canut's reign. This book also hardly mentions her first marriage to Ethelred II, really showing her alliances. The book claims that she herself was a significant player in the core rule of her sons, even hinting that she was an equal but hidden ruler herself. But we still have to take any self-commissioned work with many grains of salt, for it is pure propaganda at its finest. Hartha Canut died just two years later in 1042, 
He was formally succeeded by his half-brother and Emma's other and last remaining son, Edward. Emma, however, was not his favourite person anymore. In supporting Arthur Connacht over her other sons, she had severely fractured her relationship with her Anglo-Saxon children. Edward remained bitter about being cast aside for her new family, and his first action as king was taking away all of Emma's wealth, which was quite a hoard back then. With Edward's succession in 1042, England was restored to the Anglo-Saxon rule under the House of Wessex, after being under Viking rule since 1016. Edward was given the name Edward the Confessor, and he ruled until his death in 1066. And I'm sure you've heard of 1066 being another major date for England, the Norman conquest that brought along William the Conqueror, all set into motion just because Edward did not name his own heir, or perhaps he did but may have promised too many people the throne. William the Conqueror, by the way, was Emma's great nephew, giving him very loose but claims all the same to the throne. So Emma, through marriage, childbirth and ancestry, laid the way for Canut, Hartha Canut, Edward and eventually William to become kings of England. Emma died on the 6th of March 1052. She ruled over Anglo-Saxon England, Viking rule England and lived to see her son return the country to Anglo-Saxon rule and was just a decade short of seeing it fall into Normandy's hands. She lived through five kingships, of whom she was related to four. Emma's time as queen really was down to her foreign ties and her own ancestry. As the daughter of Richard, the Duke of Normandy, who himself was descended from Norway, and his Danish wife Gunnar, who had Norman and Danish blood. From her marriage to Ethelred, she established strong connections to England and the Anglo-Saxon people, especially with her two English sons. Emma also wanted to continue the Anglo-Danish rule with the succession of her son, Hartha Knut, especially due to her mother's Danish ancestry, and she consistently supported the Danish rule as opposed to that of the Anglos. And I'm sure if she had lived to see it, she would have loved to be alive during the Norman conquest of England too. Emma's life as Queen of England and her struggles with her son's succession span over 50 years, in which Emma played an important part of the political atmosphere in England. In fact, she is the most well-known and written about woman in late Anglo-Saxon England. The state of affairs in England was hardly ever stable during Emma's time, with the confusion of kingship and the Viking conquests. But was she really concerned with the kingdom, or simply her own power and connection to the throne? And though she played favourites with her children, Emma worked to ensure her son's succession to the throne. Never mind which son, but whichever seemed more achievable at the time. Now I hope you enjoyed this biographical video. If you have some other ideas for some not well known characters from history, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, please consider subscribing and goodbye for now.